Crew went 0-9 in the VCT regular season. Their record was so bad that their final games didn't even matter. But once they didn't make Tokyo, Crew started cooking. In the Americas LCQ, they didn't drop a single series and even debuted a never before seen double sentinel comp that put Cloud9 in a stranglehold. Using these bots in unison makes for a game plan that's near unstoppable, and there just isn't a good counter. But even then, I don't get it. How are these guys so bad, then all of a sudden this good? Hmm, I guess stats don't always tell the whole story. Today, we're breaking down how this Dark Horse saved their season and punched in their ticket to champs. Now, the reason I love Valorant is that because there are endless amounts of combinations of team comps that you can run. Games with this much diversity are some of my favorites, which would explain why I'm a huge fan of Raid Shadow Legends. They have a lineup of over 700 unique champions, plus a tactical RPG battle system. One of the toughest bosses in Raid is a Hydra, and each of its heads are its own battle. This head weakens and taunts your team. After you attack it a bunch, the Head of Wrath gives itself a scary buff, Vengeance, which triples its attack power until the end of its next turn. This head specializes in using True Fear to drag down your team, making you skip your turns and lose access to your skills. Each head has their own strategy to it, and every boss in their game is this in-depth. My favorite champion, Turvold, is one of the hardest hitting champions in the game. Just look at how cool he looks. Now for you new players, you can get your hands on Stagnite, one of the best epic champions, as well as a skin for him designed by JonTron. Just use the promo code JTSKIN before October 7th. But wait, there's more. Check out Sun Wukong, Raid's take on the mischievous Monkey King coming as a free legendary champion. All you've got to do is log into Raid on 7 different days between August 22nd and October 23rd to get your hands on this awesome champion. And that's it. With all this exciting stuff coming to Raid, you need to download it now. Use my link in the description or scan my QR code to get insane bonuses. You get Drake, an epic champion by the way, and other useful items as well, for free. So just hit my link in the description and I'll see you guys on the battlefield. Cloud9 are spread out in a 1-1-2-1 setup. They recognize that Crew's comp doesn't have a lot of utility to slam a site with, so they're spread out and want to fight the execute instead of playing retake like you might do against a breach. Viper's toxic screen is also laid out to retake or contest the hit on C and Garage. Killjoy has her bots to fight with on A, and these two can contest a B hit. But Crew's plan is to contact up close and explode onto a site. Cloud9 won't know that they're getting hit until it's too late. Chamber and Killjoy simultaneously open the round with their bots. He slots his trademark into lobby, swings out, and she deploys her turret in window. Chamber is excellent at fighting A lobby. By swinging out like this, he can contest anyone fighting for this map control. And if he ever leaves or pushes deeper, his trademark has his back. And Killjoy's specialty is mid control. With these two turrets, she can single-handedly take all this space. So if these bots don't get broken, the offense never has to worry about losing any of this map control. And because Cloud9 plan on anchoring down sites, these guys are getting so much value. The turret gets placed, it doesn't get contested. So crews swing out and hop down from window. Now Cloud9 haven't heard anything mid, the Vipers jump spotted C long, that's empty. So there's a solid chance that A's the play. So Zeppa leaves Jake on B and heads over to brace for impact in heaven with Zelsis. And then Jake gets ready to leave too. But crew is already close and start their exec. Well, I mean, it's not much of a sight hit. They kind of just threw out their boombot, smoked and walked in. And they're like, huh, I guess no one's home. And Melzer starts planning for free. But it's not going to be that easy. Cloud9 groups up quick. Zeppa lets his dog loose. And Jake paranoia's front sight. Leaf swings through the smoke, puts Astro down to 1 HP and breaks a nano. He then realizes, oh, wait a second, it's pistol round. How bad can they spam me if I just stick the spike? Start to tap this early. He's got it to half, but the paint shells get him off. Jake flies down mid, blast Astra, and that's the suck for the spike. Leaf is sticking the defuse. Oh, they're sticking. This is the risk you run when your plan is to fall back and play for spam with pistols. When the defenders smoke and tap, it creates a ton of pressure to swing out and unload your mag without really knowing that they're off the spike. Sure, they had a nano swarm, pain shells, and a gravity well, but those can only stall for so long. Crew knew the risks they were running with this pistol strat. They made their bed, and now they have to sleep in it. 
Cloud9 had the same game plan last round and were able to fight back Cruze hit with this annoying Viper Smoke and a big play coming from Zelsus. Their plan is to show some pressure on A initially, but fall into a heavier B C stack and retake A with this microwave setup in hell and that poison orb. Now crew are getting pretty close to their seekers. By grabbing this ult point on long, that gets them one step closer to a potential win condition. While they pressure C long, Killjoy and Astra are holding mid. They start the round with two stars, one at the entrance to long, one on top of default. Sky will a flash down long. Astra pulls both stars back and Chamber slots into Cubby. Now Rooney thinks they're going for the orb. He pulls out a snake bite, swings, but didn't expect the fake smoke. Klaus takes him down, but Leaf spotted Chamber hop up and both teams trade evenly. Well, sort of. One side anchor for Sentinel? If you ask me, I think Crew won this exchange. Cloud9 just lost the main piece to their game plan. Their side holds just became immensely weaker, and retaking on A is much harder without her smoke. Now Sky grabs her orb, rotates off, and after Killjoy jump spots window and doesn't see anyone push down mid, despite her turret getting shot, Crew decide to group up and re-clear A. They just saw Jet on C, so they feel safe contacting up here. If any other agent is in an off angle, they'll be ready to trade them out. But Cloud9 aren't just sitting on their hands. They just lost their biggest win condition and they need to find another. Leaf and Jake have found a timing and are pushing out of garage behind their Sky's Trailblazer. She's also just re-cleared C with a bird. Nothing's there. The defense have the read and know that an A hit is coming. Jet and Omen keep pushing, make towards Hay Bale, and hear Chambers' trademark. It's down. They can make it into enemy territory undetected. Psych, not against this comp. With the sheer amount of bots on this team, even if this turret got broken, which it did, this trademark holds the garage push while Kildre herself holds window. And now that they're going A, they still have an alarm bot holding lobby. You are never flanking against this team, at least without crew knowing. The attackers lob their pain shells, flash around the corner, and Cloud9 break the alarm bot. Nexet immediately turns around and punishes Leaf, but are crew expecting another? Crew uses their dog to clear the entirety of short, but yes, they're very aware someone could have crossed in the long. If you look closely, they keep looking back there, but Jake has the read. He waits for Killjoy to come back. He takes on the Killjoy, but this triggers an instant reaction from crew. All three players swing out and fight. Job, just waiting for that push back up from Nags. And you expect him to try to be pacey in that situation, but it's gonna be all on Jake to clean this up by himself. A flash in his face, the turn is there, and three swing. Crew lost short and long, and had they just waited around, they were going to get pinched. But by swinging all together, they've relieved this pressure and have put Jake in a 1v3. Crew start in their 1-1-3 default and have shifted their focus towards a lobby control. Their plan is to slot Chamber down into short, let him cook, and come back to mid for another B hit. By keeping Chamber down here, he can get hit by sky flashes, contest a retake of this map control, or even take fights of his own. And if it goes sour, he has a safe teleport to take, whenever he wants. Chamber can constantly apply pressure on this part of the map and keep the defense anchored. Now Cloud9 have gotten Leaf and Op this round. He's going to try and get his on C before backing off for the retake while his teammates stack more towards A. The defense immediately start trying to secure Lobby by dogging down short. Kildra plants her alarm bot, and Omen smokes deep. But crew are in. They flashed over into long, and they've pulled back both stars. Anyone playing long would have no idea where to aim. But Cloud9's dog keeps going and leaps forward, spotting four players. Leaf hears this information and is like, that's a lot of people. Their fifth player is either with them or playing super passive, trying to hold map control for them. There's free real estate to be had. He hops off platform and starts to walk down long, and he sees nothing. But at the same time, he's kind of left his Viper in a rough spot. How is she supposed to watch both Garage and B? And kind of C? There's so many holes in this defense. So Jake smokes off B site, and Zeppa flashes down long. It spots nothing, so he leaves his A stack and picks up mid for his Viper. Now there's still a potential gap in Garage, but crew are already back in mid. This turret was never broken, so they were able to walk up for free. And Chambers camping out in short, and he's heard this alarm bot. His teammates hop in Jake's smoke, and listen closely. They don't hear a turret, or any nanos. And if the alarm bot is short, it's gotta be somewhere close close on B, but it's quiet. The dark cover drops, crew then pops her seekers, and they all head off site. This means Cloud9 are playing retake again. Sky starts planning, and just look at the amount of map control that crew have, and how far back Cloud9 are. Crew have nothing to worry about except blasting their rifles at the spike. But hey, we've seen the defense win around like this before, can they do it again? Leaf tosses his op to Rooney so he can dash in off Jake's paranoia. He updrafts on top site and gets ready to fight anyone trying to spam the spike, but then Jake smokes window. And just like that, crew wins.
All right, I'll show you the rest of the round. And now, if you're retaking on B-Site, it is so important that you're smoking the spike instead of window if the enemies aren't on site. Because when you go to tap the spike, the enemies have no idea whether or not you're on it and need to peek to get you off. It's here when you take duels and punish the attackers for peeking. That's why Leaf updrafted on top of sight. This gives him a technical high-low position with his other teammates and is really awkward for attackers to peek into. And now Jake, he smoked window. When you do this, you're giving these players a safe spot to spam and throw utility from. And these bottom mid players can tell whether or not you're on the spike. I mean, their viper wall does extend into mid a bit, so maybe they're going for a total mid smoke or something, but that's kind of a stretch. So what's their plan now? They have no intentions of having Cloud9 taps, but raise nades from the smoke. They want to make Cloud9 come to them, and they're going to have to. They tap again. The grab wall sucks them off. The gravity wall was there. It was so well set up. But Jake cleans them up anyway. Not even close to half. Here. Jake tries to make a play, then Lee falls, and Rooney is forced to save the op. Cloud9 take a timeout to try and get back on track. All right, guys, next round is easy. We got our kill drill. Let's just play retake A and stack everywhere else. Uh, you don't think... Uh, never mind. Uh, Zelsus, what is it? Well, what if they use their raise nade and they break it? Oh, you'll be fine. Cloud9's plan is pretty simple this round. Play retake on A with their lockdown. With this ult, the attackers only have two options. Run away into the small cubby or head all the way back into spawn. But crew might be cooking up a secret third option. They're set up in A1-4 and plan on pounding it up A despite playing against the kill drill. We see the same opening. Flash up high, double star pullback, and they have long five seconds into the round. Crew creeps up short, break the alarm bot, and burst on the site behind their cabbages and an extra bird to flush it out. But uh... Cloud9 realized there's an issue. Ray still has her paint shells online. If they go for the meta lockdown, she's just gonna drop it on their head and ruin their plan. So Killjoy sprints to plan B. Ult from heaven. It's not as good, but it still clears out the site. And if you look closely, Ashra tosses the spike to her raise. She plans for both short and long, and because she planted, she now has her showstopper online. Great on the fly decision making. Now Cloud9 aren't waiting around. All five players are here, and they flood on the site. The dog jumps from heaven, and Jake flashes for it. And he has the showstopper to get back in this. Two stars already on the spike. They've got mollies as well. Leaf has dashed his way forward so aggressively. There it is. Showstopper on. Is it going to connect? Rooney mollies out cubby, but crew are sitting in it. Snake bites won't kill, so they're trying to play time. Leaf having to make a big play here, and they're going to swing it to four. They've got the smoke to cover one side, and they've cleaned them up. But crew with the counter punch. Leaving Rooney alone and he falls as well. Cloud9 keep getting knocked back onto eco rounds and they can't catch their footing. Crew keep getting insane amounts of value out of their bots. Even though this was a save, just look at how freely crew were able to swing between C and A without ever having to worry about mid. If C9 want to win, it has to start with smashing these things. But they are swapping their setup into a 1-1-3 and are heavily contesting a lobby where their Viper and Killjoy stall out elsewhere. They've also changed up their Viper wall so they can use it to retake C and Garage and also contest a B hit. Now crew are headed right for them in their 1-4 default. Who's coming out on top in this battle for lobby? Crew open up with their default utility, but Leaf plows through the star and tries to follow up behind the sky flash. Leaf couldn't get one while being pestered by these smokes, and Jake even paranoid for him. But it was too late. Crew snagged the first blood, A long, and Klaus uses his dog to clear out short. The attackers have this entire third of the map, and this turret wasn't broken. They can do whatever they want, but crew know that Cloud9 are starved for map control, so they're sitting around, waiting for the defense to make their next move. If Cloud9 don't push out and make a play, odds are crew are going to trade out with the player advantage and win the round. So by being patient and burning the clock, crew is waiting for Cloud9 to push into them. Zeppa dogs down long to try and get a read on the attackers, but crew break it from so far that it's useless. Now the offense feels really confident to make a play. The only other information that Cloud9 have are their sky flashes, but you don't know if these tag one or four people. The information you get just isn't enough to form an accurate stack to contest and execute. Crew crew are in the driver's seat, so they decide to leave their chamber A to eat these sky flashes. And since their turret has full mid control, and they're stacked with utility to contest a defuse, they head back to mid and get ready to hit B again. Now Cloud9 are betting on an A execute since they have the retake wall for B and C, but Zelsus is feeling confident. He timing the boombot, crew spacing just isn't there, but Cloud9 is, and Rooney mollies. 
crew wasn't ready for this hero play from Zelsa's, and the round has been flipped upside down. All of Cloud9 are now guarding the spike, and with such little time left, crew are locked out of this round. They don't have the time to break up these crossfires. There are no flashes to pop out of, there's no, there's no nothing, you just have to take this dry, and you're done. This round lasts 15 seconds. Cloud9 are fighting lobby, so are crew. Firing range there. We're into it. Two to four subs right now. They're gonna dash again. There's the flash. Same thing. They're oh! so aggressive. What is that? Leaf with three. Now this is how last round was supposed to go. It failed so miserably that crew didn't expect Cloud9 to go for it again. And now the defense are on a roll. As he tucks into the Cloudburst looking for the fourth to put him away and he does. Crew have had enough of a main. Cloud9 fought well and hard for it last round, and crew are now focusing on breaking bots in mid in a flipped 4-1 default. Once the bots are broken, the defense is going to be forced to spread more thin, and then they'll hit A with their Killjoy's lockdown. Now, Cloud9 aren't expecting crew to fight for lobby, and have moved Omen towards C for a heavier stack with Killjoy and Viper. On A, Zeppo is going to get Leaf on the line, and then he can join the stack as well. They send a flash into lobby, it tags nothing, and then they have a lobby. But crew have taken mid with a bird of their own, and they set up to poke and prod even deeper. Chamber sets up his rendezvous, and these two creep closer to front B. Kesnet throws out a satchel. It doesn't break anything, but it has dragged the attention of two Cloud9 players. Sky then moves over to Garage to set her chamber up with a flash, and they don't see any bots again. Garage and front B are both clear. Now, if you're a chamber player and have another Sentinel teammate, what you can do is actually use this trademark to default into Garage. Just slap it in the middle, and it literally clears everything. Close left, right, behind the box, and even Link if you want to put it deeper and get risky. I mean, Killjoy's turret is holding every possible flank, but Crew didn't do that. Which is okay, because Killjoy's been holding short and part of long this entire time with her turret, ready to swing off it at a moment's notice. And now she's calling her team to come back. Now that they've probably dragged rotates over into mid, A's probably weaker to hit with her ultimate now. But Cloud9 want information. They want to know what Crew's next move is. So Jake ults in the sea long, and he sees nothing. Now because Jet's been watching A lobby this whole time, they feel like the attackers are somewhere in mid. Rooney spams through garage, chips down chamber, but by this time, Crew have started their A take. They've dogged down short, and Cloud9 reacts with one of their own. While Trailblazer coming in, at the same time Trailblazer coming out. Crew have just lost all this map control they spent so much time gaining, and hurry down into short and waste no time activating their lockdown. After flushing out mid, Cloud9 rotate over to A, and Leaf tries to make a play short, but it's too risky. He then realizes, wait a minute. I didn't see anyone long, did I? And starts to make his way into this small cubby. Leaf makes it in with a second to spare, and now has to make a play. I never expect this. He might have made noise, though. Oh. <laughs> Even if he did, it doesn't matter. Klaus, though, clean. Hello? Oh, oh, Hello? Oh, oh, my God. It's tied at three apiece. Crew activate their Seekers and Nano to prevent a potential flood and plant the spike. Cloud9 leak behind their orb. Seems to be the tip of the spear. He's made a couple. Ray satchels heaven to prevent the double peek on graffiti. Sky flashes spawn and takes the heaven duel, knowing he's going to try and trade. It's all up to Rooney, and most of crew are low. It's definitely doable. What you do here for Rooney for the Viper, who's weak himself. No one dare challenge. No one dare swing. There's the first waiting for it. Kezin needs one more orb for a rocket launcher. The plan is to snag this orb in their 113 default, and then to hit someone with it. Now, Cloud9 aren't stupid. They know that this ultimate is a big win condition for this defensive sided comp. They have Leaf and Azop posted up on top of default, and Jake ready to help in the event of a rush. Now, they've also changed their Killjoy bots. Their turret is watching B, her learn bot is holding short, and Sky is holding long. Normally when you're holding lobby, if someone blocks your line of sight, you have to respect that someone has walked into short. But not with this bot. Rotates aren't coming until this thing breaks. So crew might think that they've baited over rotates, but in reality, as long as Sky is holding long, Cloud9 aren't moving. Crew open with their three default stars, pull them back, and send in a flash. Leaf can't get a good shot off with all these smokes, and I think Crew saw the operator. They're all peeking long, but scatter right as Leaf is getting on the line. But Chamber's stuck. He calls for a smoke, and uses his trademark to clear out Cubby in case anyone walked up, and he gets out safely. Similarly to what I mentioned about Garage earlier, Chamber is using his trademark to take space and hold it. Now, Leaf saw this bot get placed, so unless Cloud9 wants to walk all the way up and break it, crew are going to have C-Long for the rest of the round. 
Oh, and by the way, they also have all of mid again. This turret still isn't being broken. So after showing three people on C long, crew can literally sprint through spawn and start taking space on A instantly. They pull back their third star and Zeppa doesn't know what's going on in lobby. His flash gets a tag and his teammates start rotating over after not seeing or hearing anything elsewhere on the map. Crew start to sprint out in long and Zeppa joins his teammates on site and brace for impact. Cosmic divide is enough for it. There's the seekers. They're gonna fight back with a flash. Jake gets caught in a gravity well paint shells combo. They want to take the fight to crew. in the back of sight. Oh, Kes Kes didn't know Zelsus was short. Find anything he does on the A guy just doesn't miss his ults. This execute was something else. The Cosmic Divide made heaven and hell irrelevant, so this suck nade combo for back sight became way more potent. And Jake's Flood Smoke actually worked against him and got him killed. And that kill gave Kesnet a showstopper, which instead of flying into sight with it, he sat on top of these boxes, creating a high-low-ish setup with his teammates funneling out of long. Cloud9 couldn't hold back this push and are forced to save the op. These bots have been absolute pests this whole game. But to be honest, the secret MVP of this attacking half has been Astra. Her stars have created so many small timings for the offense that it's impossible to keep track of them all if you're playing against her. At the start of every round, she's placing most, if not all of her stars down, pulling them back, and creating so many question marks for the defense to worry about. And this round is no different. Crew are bringing back their pistol strat and plan on contacting up B since their turret hasn't been broken in a while. And their chamber is lurking A. Because since Cloud9 have been using a sky flash to fight for lobby it should attack chamber making the defenders think that there's something going on in a while they're actually walking up mid but c9 are in a pretty weak buy and want to keep all their bad weapons grouped up on one side of the map and let leaf deal with a on his own crew start by pulling back their stars in lobby and on c but with it davies has found a small timing for himself in short and with this trademark he can work sewer without ever having to worry about getting swung from long at the same time crew have made it out of mid window with their turret and are walking up towards b but Leaf tells his team, A is pretty quiet, and they need information somewhere. Zeppa flashes mid, and it tags crew. The gig is up. Played and look at the TP though, he's actually being able to get back in towards this beat and hit the post plant fast. Zeppa's dog gets shot and Jake throws his flash. Crew knows that they're trying to flood and they're spamming both links. Cloud9 are forced to give up B, but crew feel like they couldn't make their way in and back off. But Rooney and Zelsis peek from garage, break the turret, and crew turn around to get ready for the punish. This isn't really a great fight for Cloud9, so they retreat into window. Now while all that was going on, Leaf was thinking to himself, hmm, what if someone crossed with that smoke I saw earlier? He's very cautious, knowing that if someone did, they'd be walking up short right about now. <laughs> but he smells something fishy, and he heads even deeper into short to flush it out. Available. That avenue is available. Davies against Leaf. Stop this close is going to be a problem, but the shorty is not. Crew just lost all their map control on A, and Davies tells his teammates that the op is here. And with the big question marks they've just created in mid, they book it to C and want to get there before Cloud9 clear them out. Stars go down, crew funnels in, and Cloud9's retake isn't looking that strong. So I'm playing on sites when it comes to the C post plan. Right, they're both down already. Rooney swings out. Hey, Teets, this comp is double sentinels. Are you not going to show us any defense rounds? Yes, yes, don't worry, I'm getting there. If it isn't obvious already, Crew has a lot of good defensive utility. They got three bots to watch three different lanes, Astra, who has global stopping power, Nano Swarms, Races Paint Shells, and I haven't even mentioned Chamber. He's actually the perfect counter to Viper and the way teams are using her. In my previous videos, I've showed off how Vipers love to use their walls on attack to lurk up and deny a ton of vision. But with Chamber, he can place his rendezvous in a safe spot and push past these walls way better than Jet can. His teleport doesn't expire and can more often than not push even farther and safer than she can. This matchup is a nightmare for Cloud9. But hey, you know what? They did win the second pistol. Crew's plan was to play a retake on B and C while four person pushing down a lobby. Pistols are pretty weak on their own, so this is why you see so many teams form heavy stacks on these rounds. Regardless, Cloud9 hit nicer shots, and they won a crucial round if they want to come back. Then after converting the anti-eco, that brings us here. Crew are in a heavy BC setup with Chamber ready to fight either Garage or C site at a moment's notice and get out safe. Killjoy and Rays are stalling out on B, and Sky is going to get initial information on A, but end up playing retake. C9 are in a 3-1-1 default and want to hit C after getting tagged by the Skybird on A. Because once the bird goes caca, and then Viper's walls go up, 
the defense should freak out and drag over rotates, but crew aren't biting that easy. I mean, why would they? They have a lifetime supply of utility that Cloud9 need to bait out before crew actually react to what they're doing. Don't tell me Cloud9 are just gonna run it up C eventually, right? They start the round with one wing top default and sky flashing up C. Crew responds by flashing long and attacks someone. Zelsis claims a space with an alarm bot. Now Cloud9 feel like their smokes are creating enough pressure with that skybird that just triggered, but they aren't. Instead, they're contacting up C long and are heading right into a chamber. Go for one early kill. He's covered his flanks. He gets the early kill. Doesn't instantly teleport out. He's still playing around this. Now playing outside of his tether. Jake easy, dead and Melster's causing problems from Platt. And look, the trademark actually finds value too. Oh, hey. Huge round out from Melser. We finally see a straight up execute and fight here from Cloud9 and it gets absolutely demolished by crew. Yeah, you probably need to default against this comp more. Cloud9 have one thing in mind this round, Slam A. They have Killjoy's Lockdown and have a solid chance to pull this one out. Hey, but Teets, they have bad guns. They're just gonna lose. <sighs> no, Timmy, that's not how Valorant works. Cloud9's comp is fantastic at holding a site after taking it, especially A. They have snake bites, nano swarms, and Viper's poison orb is impossible to get through when it's clogging up this narrow choke point. So once this big ult clear site, they should be able to stall out and win this eco round. And it certainly looks like it. Crew are positioned in their same 4-1 setup. They're allowing C9 to get that lockdown off. Interesting. I'm starting to see a trend here. Into the round that we skipped, the first full buy, Chamber and Sky contested lobby. But against the bonus and this round's eco, they're playing retake A. I think their protocol is that on their ecos, we'll ignore these walls and let them take this site. Sure, they can stall us out a little bit on the retakes, but with better weapons, we could still pull it off. So essentially, against full buys, Chamber will contest a lobby. Against ecos, Chamber plays elsewhere. Oh, I mean, that sounds good to me. Cloud9 sprints out of the gate. They flash long, swing through, and their dog makes it all the way short and onto sight. The offense now knows that A is free, but to prevent the flood and buy time to set up in their post plant, Killjoy slams her ult. They sprint into the open site. Jake plants, but now crew are in for a rough time. I know they have their protocol that they're following, but this retake isn't going to be that easy. C9 has a snake bite, a nano, Omen's paranoia, and this poison orb is going to keep going up and lock them out of the site. Even with better guns, it doesn't matter. This is a tall order to deal with. Crew group up for the retake, and it begins. Back into it, and there's gonna be a lot of people trying to get in from crew. Can they break through? They've gotten onto the site, they've gotten the spike down, and there you see in that exact moment, you highlighted it a few rounds ago, there's the focus, there's the dump of utility. Look at Zeppel playing on the inside of that smoke too. Popping a flash, it's all delay, 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 delay. How does crew get back in? Just like that, I oh. guess they've been able to get two big kills. Jake looking up into the heavens to see if he can take one down with him, but no, he falls. Spam is missing, no way. Yeah, he's gonna get it the whole way. There's nothing Rooney can do here. Gets the kills, but it does not matter. Crew had the smallest window to start the retake, and it was right here. When this snake bite ran out and their smoke was also down, if they didn't push out at this exact second, this smoke would have chunked away their HP and they would have lost. Now, if Cloud9 had better loadouts, they'd probably come out on top. The sheriffs just didn't cut it. But hey, I guess these protocols work after all. And come to think of it, this comp just seems like it completely countered what C9's game plan was. Cloud9 didn't have a good answer to all these bots and it shows in the final score. But hey, don't get me wrong, their comp can still be extremely strong. You don't believe me? Check out this video here and see for yourself.